Hello and welcome to Structured Change. Today we're going to take a look at two topics in one. The first being what is an asset and what, of course what is asset management. These two terms are often overcomplicated with technical descriptions of what they actually are. Well, if you look at an asset or take an asset first, it's simply the vehicle that converts subjectives through to value for stakeholders. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And then if you take a look at asset management, it's how an organization nurtures the delivery of the value through the asset through to stakeholders. So depending on the maturity and the capability of the organization, asset management might be a stretch, it might be accidental, or it might be very deliberate. From a change perspective, it's very important to understand those two elements of the organization. Because then when you take the principles of asset management, alignment, assurance, leadership and value, you've got a set of lenses plus a set of levers that you can actually be using to help an organization succeed. So let's take a look at the following presentation and you'll get an understanding of how you can leverage this important two topics in your change journey. Let's go. Okay, so let's take a look at these two questions. What is an asset and what is asset management? The example that you'll see throughout this presentation, I feel is quite simple to understand. And hopefully at the end of it, you'll realize just how straightforward asset management really is. So if we first of all take a definition of what is an asset, as you can see here, an item, thing or entity that is the potential or actual value to an organization. So I think that's a pretty friendly statement. Anything that helps deliver value to an organization, okay? We look at the next one, or the next definition, that is, what is asset management per se? It's what, as asset management translates the organizational objectives into asset-related decisions, plans, and activities using a risk-based approach. So you would have seen in the previous um, video, we talk about cost, risk, and performance. That fits in nicely with this particular slide. But you can see here, it's quite simple that the asset sits in the center, objectives come in from one side, value comes out from the other, and what we're really saying here is that that square here is really the asset management system. Okay, so let's hold that thought and move on. Now, the example I'm going to use today is really a basic park, a community park or recreational park that you'll find in a town anywhere around the world. You can see here, you've got um, some of the stakeholders here, which could be these children running through the park. They're happy because their requirements are being met. They're getting value from the park, okay? Now, as you can see, looking around the park, we've got assets within assets here in different systems. So we've got an entire system, which is the park, but then we've got playground equipment, We've got a table, probably a sand pit. We've decided to plant some trees and some shrubs. And we've also got land on which the park resides, okay? Now, if we start off with just the basic land, from an asset management perspective, we have a term and it's called whole of life, or what is the whole of life consideration on an asset? Well, in this particular case, we've got the, might be the buy price, or it could be the lease price. That's the initial price of the actual land. But then even from a government perspective that typically own parks around the world, you then have to wonder, well, to what duration will the lease run for? Is it for 100 years? Okay. Are there community groups that actually have a say in how long or where a park should actually reside? So it's well and good to maybe have all these buildings sitting around the outside of a park, similar to Central Park in New York, but really one would argue that if you had a park set up like this, you might actually have concerns around traffic, noise, um, residential areas, schools, churches. There's a lot to consider. And again, from an asset management perspective, someone might go through a systems engineering approach to actually determine all the requirements of being addressed and considered. Now let's take a, the next look at building up this park. We had, a, we had a blank plot of land. We've decided that we're going to invest in it and we're gonna, we're gonna have a park. Now there was no trees on it or 
shrubs of any particular type of vegetation apart from grass. So then we ask ourselves, well, we could go out and plant some trees, okay? That's fine. We'll build some shrubs, pop some shrubs in. But and then you have to ask the question, what type of trees are there? Would we put a willow tree near a swimming pool that could get the roots into the swimming pool next door? Probably not. Would we actually have a tree that looked very pretty in the summer, but then was deciduous and all the leaves came out in the winter and clogged the drains nearby? It might not matter, but it might matter. Or you might have an evergreen tree, which actually would drop leaves all through the year. Might want that, you might not want that. And then of course you've got some shrubs here. So some of the things that you might consider around the shrubs is, they look nice, but are they native to the area? Will they breed little nasties living inside them? Could be rabbits, could be snakes. Or could they become an area that traps litter when people throw trash on the ground? All these, again, are considerations from an asset management perspective, or again, systems engineering. Now, let's move on to some of the other things that we would have at a park, and that's playground equipment. So looking at these pieces of equipment, you might want to consider, well, who is the OEM, or the original equipment manufacturer, of the equipment? Have they been in business for a long time? Are the actual items made out of particular materials that would be lasting under the environment that they're in? For instance, if I was going to build a park next to the seaside, I would have to understand that the salt and the wind would play bearing down on the life or the condition of those particular pieces of equipment. Whereas if it was right up in, in the middle of um, the country somewhere where there's no salt, it's pretty plain, well, you could probably change the material specification and maybe get something more inexpensive. But again, you're looking at the original cost from the OEM, their support. You might be looking at the warranty. And of course, a very big one in this particular one would be safety, okay? So again, considerations in terms of asset management. Now, after addressing the vegetation, the land and the equipment, the playground equipment that we might put on our park, we're also probably going to consider we'd like people to be able to sit down and watch their children. We might want to have a sand pit, you know, kids love to play in the sand. But then you ask the question here, what materials? How long will they live for? Will they require maintenance? Will they require painting? Or perhaps will they require oiling down periodically to protect them from the elements? Or, from a maintenance perspective, are we okay with replacing this table every few years? Because again, an inexpensive wooden table will probably only last a few years, where a concrete one may last 20 years. But you have to ask yourself again, from the asset management delivery side, what do your stakeholders want? Something that is aesthetically pleasing or a big chunk of concrete? Again, value is perceived from different stakeholders. When we talk about this sand pit, we might say, wow, that's very simple. But then you run the risk of animals, dogs and cats, you know, using that to excrete. You've got the problems in an inner city park that needles and shafts might be left in there or broken glass. So all these other considerations come to light when we're actually considering the park and the whole of life perspective. So returning back to the beginning, an asset is something that has potential value of value to stakeholders. Well, in this case, the park clearly does to our little friends down here in the picture. The asset management is the ability to sustain this asset throughout its design life to deliver value to stakeholders which we talked about everything from requirements through to supporting, through to maintenance, through to operations, and what is it going to cost the community to do it? Everything from planting trees, to mowing the lawn, to cleaning the drains, everything has a cost associated with it. So you need to factor that in. So this slide was a very quick walkthrough on what is an asset and what is asset management. I hope you've seen from this presentation how simple the whole concept is. So again, thank you for viewing our video and please look out for other such videos at structuredchange.tv.